Hi, my name is Kim Peck from My Stampin' Garage. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make a swing card. Um, everything I'm going to use today is, um, are all Stampin' Up! products, but uh, I'm going to show you how I got this little whale to swing back and forth. So to get started, I'm going to do the background first because it's a little messy. And so I'm going to use a paper towel underneath my surface and I'm using one of the larger acrylic blocks. You can use whatever size is appropriate for your particular project. Um, I am going to be using the Stampin' Write markers, which are a watercolor marker. You could also use an alcohol marker, um, but when you use that, you would spritz. I'm gonna spritz this with water after I color on the acrylic block. With the um, alcohol markers, you would use, obviously, alcohol to spritz it. It works as well. With this one, I wanted a little more blending of the colors, and that's why I decided to go with my watercolor markers. So I'm just gonna color some water onto this block. That was the Mint Macaron. This one is Coastal Cabana. I just picked some colors that go well and blend pretty well together. And then I went from kind of light to dark. This is Bermuda Bay. And I found if I do a circular motion, I get a little more ink on the block, which is really what I want. And then last is Pacific Point. So once I get that colored in the way I want it, then I'm going to take my Stampin' Mist, and this has just water in it, and I'm going to mist that background, and I'm going to give it a decent amount because I want it to pool under the block when I press it down. You can mix it a little if you want to, but it does it pretty well on its own once you turn it over. So I'm going to turn it over onto my paper, and then I'm just going to push and let those colors kind of bleed together a little bit. Let it sit for just a minute until they soak in. And this is why having some sort of cardstock with a little bit of a coating on it helps. I'm using the Shimmer White cardstock. Um, you could use a glossy cardstock or um, any other cardstock that has a slight finish. I have done this on watercolor paper. The only problem with that is a lot of them are textured, and so you don't get a nice smooth um, background, and that's really what I was going for here. So I'm going to set this aside and let it dry while I'm doing the rest of my project. A lot of times I will use the alcohol markers. They don't bleed quite as well together um, because it dries faster, but I also use it because it dries faster. Um, and then my paper, I cut this card um, cardstock in half vertically and I'm going to fold it in half. This is the Bermuda Bay cardstock. And then you need another solid color of cardstock. In this case, I'm using um, Pool Party. And with this, I'm going to send it through my um, die cut machine. I will be using the Stampin' Emboss, the new one from Stampin' Up, but you could use any um, die cutting machine. So what I did is I cut these out together at the same time so that they matched up. And I'm not gonna show you how to send it through the machine. I'm pretty sure you've all done that. Or if not, there's lots of videos out there. Um, but you want these to be able to match up like that. I did not adhere it down first because then I took this background and or this piece and put it through with the um, world old world paper embossing folder and that gave it almost a wrinkled look. But any embossing folder would be nice. So so now I've got the base of my card done and I'm ready to start putting things together for. A piece of this card, the, the bottom portion and the swing portion, you are going to need a piece of cardstock that matches your base. And um, this one is a one and a half by two inch piece right here. No, sorry, this one. Um, no, I was right the first place. One half by two inch piece, and I scored it at a quarter inch three-quarter inch, and one and a quarter inches. These will be in the written instructions as well. And then you'll need another piece that is two and a half by four and a quarter and scored along the short edge at one half inch, one and a quarter inches, and two inches. And again, those will be in the written instructions as well. 
Okay, I want to finish my background piece that I started. So now that it's dry, and actually I had one pre-made, so I am going to stamp my images on it. To do this, I'm actually using the Well Done stamp set from Stampin' Up, but again, any cute stamp set will work. I'm gonna stamp a fun background. Just make an underwater scene here. That was the uh, Pretty Peacock ink. This one is Pool Party. I wanted my jellyfish to be a little subtle. And then this is Pacific Point. And those are some of the same colors I used for the background in the first place. So I've got my background done. Now in order to make the little swing mechanism, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on now that I've got my um, texturizing done. And you can choose if you want a subtle look or the more textured look. I think I'm gonna put the more textured look out I liked it because I thought it looked sort of like waves. And just line up your ovals. Oh, I should have done that, I guess, the other way because that's how I cut it, but it'll work. So line them up, and then you're going to put this piece on the inside, but before you do that, you're gonna take the little piece that we had pre-scored. I used my scoreboard to score these. Um, and for this one, I'm going to add some adhesive to this inside portion. So let me get these out of my way. I put some here and then just folded that in half. I did not put adhesive yet on these little flaps. On this part, I've got it all glued together. And now I'm going to use my hole punch. And I'm using an eighth inch. Um, I wanted I'm going to be putting a brad through here for my mechanism, and I wanted there to be a little bit of give. You don't want this to be too tight against the brad, or you won't get the movement that you want. So I made a little hole there, and now I'm ready to adhere this down. To do that, I'm going to put adhesive, and I'm using the Stamp and Seal Plus because it's a little more sturdy. Um, you could use liquid glue here as well. And I'm going to put that right in the middle of my card, on the fold line so that the flaps are on either side of that fold line. And then I'm going to put this background on. This way it covers a little bit of that mechanism. So we've got that done. And then to make the mechanism, this is going to be a little hard to see. Um, I have a but this is about 3 8 inch wide. I don't want it super wide so you um, can see it hanging down, but you also can't get it too skinny because you have to put a hole in it. So this is a piece of window sheet that's about 2 inches. And you could go longer and cut off what you don't need. I kind of wish I had because I don't think my whale is going to be as far down as I might like. But um, so, And then you're going to take your 8 inch hole punch and punch a hole at one end. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, this is critical. You want to cut off these sharp corners. So I just kind of round it around that hole with my snips. You want to just kind of have that be a gradually rounded edge. Hopefully you're able to see that. And now to put the mechanism together, I'm going to take a brad. And I'm going to put this through with the brad going up toward the top because I don't want a lump up here when I go to mail this. Um, so I'm putting it kind of from the bottom up, but you do want to have your um, little piece of window sheet between that. So I don't know if you can see that. I took my brad, put it through the window sheet, then put it through the mechanism. Now I'm going to turn it over, making sure that brad is laying flat, the top of it is laying flat. Now this is an important part. You don't want this brad, normally when you do a brad, you want to push it down as hard as you can, but in this case, you don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my snips kind of far up here so that we're kind of at the broader part of them, and I'm going to fold this down, leaving some space so that has the ability to move. See how it moves kind of freely? And then I'm going to just test I don't know if you can see or not, but that piece is moving like I want it to. So once you get that done, you're kind of home free on this technique. Then for um, to decorate the card, I am going to stamp 
my whale from the Whale Done set in black memento ink. And then I'm going to use the um, whale punch to cut that out. These do come as a bundle, which is nice, but you can use anything. You can hand cut your images, um, but you are gonna need one for the front and a matching one for the back. So if you're cutting by hand whatever you punched, just cut an extra one and cut it out as well. I'm just gonna punch a blank one for the back. And then I'm going to put some adhesive, make sure they're laying in the right direction. I'm gonna put some adhesive on my whale. And then you're gonna put this mechanism down and when you fold it, you're gonna see that it goes down a little bit further. So just kind of figure out where you want your whale to hang. And like I said, I wish I would have left that a little longer because I could always cut off the excess. Ideally, you would want it to go a little further on there, but it'll be okay. And then I'm going to also add some adhesive to this side so that they're sure to stay together. The other thing having the double layer does is it gives it a little extra weight so that it hangs down nicely. And now my whale is gonna move. For the bottom portion of the card to put it together, you're gonna take that um, piece, that two and a half by four and a quarter inch piece where it was scored and you're gonna fold it into a W shape. So if you looked at it from the top, you can see there's a W. And you're gonna end up putting, um, this mountain fold is gonna go in the middle like that. So I'm gonna put some adhesive on this side. And again, if you don't have um, a sturdy adhesive, you'll wanna use liquid glue so that it will hold well. And I'm just going to put that portion clear up against the base of the card. And it also covers over a little bit of this white, which is nice when you're looking through the card. You're not going to see that border very much. Then I'm going to add some additional adhesive. Whoops. This adhesive is kind of funny. It uh, is almost like a cellophane, so I can fold it over when it's too big. And then I'm going to bring this down again to the base of the card, like so. And now, whoops, I just tightened my, <laughs> my brad a little bit. So you'll wanna make sure that you don't push on that brad much. And so now my little whale is moving again. And then I'm just gonna decorate the outside of the card. To do that, I stamped the turtle. And this is the shaded spruce and the well done saying. This stamp set has several cute sayings, but that one works out well for this. And then what I did with that, I had to hand cut the um, turtle. So I hand cut that. I'm not gonna make you watch me do that because you know how to do it. So there's my turtle. And then I used um, one of the layering circle dies and cut the whale done out with that. So I've already done that so that you don't have to watch that part. And I'm just gonna place these on this outer portion. And I like to overlap it a little bit so you realize that it gives a little more depth. So my turtle is gonna be here, my whale done here. A lot of times I would pop this up, but I'm not going to because when I mail this, it's already gonna be a little bulky. So I'm just gonna put these flat, but overlapping that oval just a little bit. So there's my whale done. And to finish off the card then, I'm gonna take a little bow this one happens to be pool party that matches my paper. And I'm gonna put that up there. And then the last thing I wanna do is just add a few of the sequins that go with this set too. Um, and you can choose, I, sit, I tend to like the darker ones, but you do have to be careful because some of these are different colors. <laughs> and they, there are three different sizes. I probably should have grabbed these out before we started, but I didn't, so. Um, Let's see, there's one. So I'm gonna take the largest size and the medium size. And then for the tiny size, I am gonna just use a drop of glue. So I'm gonna put that right about there. You don't need very much. And I'm gonna pick that up. Somewhere I have my pick tool, but for this, I'm just gonna pick it up and turn it over. on top of my glue and let that dry a little bit. 
And then here is my medium sized one. Put that here and then the large one. And it just looks like he has bubbles coming up. And that is our finished card. So that is how you do the swing card technique. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Thanks for watching.